Okay, so the first topic we want to talk about is, well, essentially, um, yes, if we go back to the PlayStation 4 Pro, the main issue with it in terms of being a meaningful upgrade across the board was its uh, CPU, right? It was basically the same CPU that was uh, within the base PlayStation 4, though it did have a clock speed enhancement. Now, this basically limited what the machine was capable of in terms of high frame rate gameplay. And obviously, there wouldn't be any game changing uh, enhancements that involved physics, for example. Now, we're looking at the specifications for the PlayStation 5 Pro, and it looks much the same playbook, actually. Um, the CPU is the same Zen 2 cluster that we saw in the PlayStation 5, and it actually has two modes. We can confirm this. Um, basically, there's a standard mode where the CPU clocks to a maximum of 3.5 gigahertz, and then there's an enhanced mode. This enhanced mode essentially adds 10% to uh, core frequency, giving us a maximum of 3.85 gigahertz. And um, because the new PlayStation 5 Pro, similar to the standard PlayStation 5, seems to operate with a fixed power cap, this means that there is some degradation to GPU performance. They're looking at an impact of 1.5% to clocks and 1% to GPU performance generally, um, which, you know, basically is, I'd describe that as an irrelevance, really. Um, Alex, I'm going to come to you first of all about this. What do you think of this um, decision? I mean, there are reasons why, but it is a bit of a disappointment because, you know, what we've found recently is that the CPU limitations on the current gen consoles are very much real, right? For sure. And I think we're going to be seeing more and more games coming out in the near to midterm future uh, where we can see uh, essentially that uh, the current gen consoles, yes, uh, they were much more powerful in relative CPU terms at the time of their release to PC components. Uh, for example, the Jaguar cores and the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 weren't at all good actually at release while there was a level of competence here uh, by using Z versions of Zen 2, uh, Ryzen yeah. Zen 2, uh, that we're seeing the limitations coming in. And it's mainly has to do um, with kind of like single core speed of the CPUs versus what is out there right now in the PC space. And that uh, means for certain things, just primarily 30 FPS experiences on the consoles. And there's there's examples of that coming out in the future. Uh, we also have historical examples, like some of them are not great examples, uh, like for example, Gotham Knights, where uh, we know that the game is just a problem because it runs poorly <laughs> everywhere, but it still had the limitations of being a 30 FPS cap due to the way it was programmed and what they wanted for a consistent experience. And I feel um, at least from the perspective of their side, it probably makes sense to keep things as is because there's there certain things that developers rely upon uh, to scale their games and changing the CPU architecture to something more modern uh, might complicate the development environment where they have to take into account certain other things. For example, the amount of cores or adding in things like a 3D vCache uh, that you see in the later Ryzen processors. Uh, you wouldn't really expect those things. Um, so I think maybe for just keeping development consistent and non-complicated as is, keeping the CPU the exact same is very reasonable. Um, whether or not consumers are um, appreciative of that is an entirely different question. Um, but yeah, I, I see it as kind of reasonable from that aspect. Also, potentially, one thing that is very interesting that you talked about just now, Richard, is that there is a very different consideration in the console space for essentially how much wattage is going through the machine. And Sony went yeah. through a very went through a different design this time versus what Xbox has done. And they kind of automatically manage the power level via clocks the entire time the thing is on. And uh, that leads to other repercussions in terms of clock speed, as well as in terms of like the balance between GPU and CPU at all in one moment. So I think probably Zen 2, as it is, played another role in that as to why it is the way it is, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, anything extra to add to that, Oliver? Well, I don't know. I kind of frame it <laughs> in, in certain terms. Um, when you look at the PS4 Pro, it had a 31% clock advantage over the PS4. You were going from 1.6 gigahertz to 2.1 gigahertz, which was a pretty substantial yeah. clock increase and actually like 
I remember back in the day, like playing Battlefield 1 around the PS4 Pro's launch, and that actually running a lot better on the PS4 Pro than the PS4. And that's not because of any GPU advantage. Obviously, the increase there was was pretty, you know, insubstantial relative to the CPU increase in that particular title when you're playing 64 player matches. Here, we're looking at about a 10% increase in that uh, optional 3. 8.5 gigahertz mode, which is not that compelling, especially in light of, and I'm sure Alex will talk about this a lot, in light of ray tracing, where ray tracing can be really intensive on the CPU. And that poses like really big issues potentially for games that are trying to push additional ray tracing features on the PlayStation 5 Pro or Trinity hardware. Um, and that's potentially a really big problem. And of course, I understand that it has to be, you know, there are probably a lot of really good reasons as to why it should continue to be a Zen 2. But personally, and maybe this ties into the process node discussion a bit, but but personally, I was expecting a higher clocked uh, CPU. And that does not seem to have materialized, or at least seems to have materialized in a very limited fashion relative to expectations. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point because the, um, well, first of all, let's talk about Zen 2 and why they're sticking with it. I think it's basically an area thing. Zen 2 is a offers great performance for the amount of area on the silicon chip that it occupies and um you know zen 3 zen 4 as you know basically as you move through the zens you're <laughs> getting uh higher <laughs> area usage that isn't proportionately in line with the performance increase i think um and yes so basically it kind of makes sense also for compatibility reasons to stay on um zen 2 just makes things a lot easier uh, from a production and developer perspective. Um, the clock speed increase, it's not great. I mean, when we saw with, I mean, it wasn't just PS4 Pro, it was also Xbox One X that also had a 31% um, that's a bump to frequencies. The, the thing they had in common was that they moved to 16 nanometer from 28 nanometer. Now, this all strongly suggests one of two scenarios uh, owing to this limited clock boost. Number one, um, they do have a set limit of power that can be consumed by both CPU and GPU, and moving that clock up too high will take up too much of that power budget, and it will take up too it will take away too much from the GPU. I think the good thing about this enhanced mode, it might only be ten percent, but if it is only you know a one percent impact on GPU performance, that's basically unnoticeable, whereas ten percent extra CPU time uh, would be, you know, quite good, I think, mm -hmm. in games that are CPU limited. That said, we can't talk about specific titles at this time, but there are titles out there coming soon that are in the 20s owing to be owing to being CPU limited. I guess one we can talk about is Baldur's Gate 3, right? Right. That's a very good one, Correct. actually. Yeah. That 10% extra GPU performance isn't going to do much at all. If you're like, you know, 25 frames per second and be at like 27 28 frames per second it's still not great if you see what i mean yeah um yeah so it, you know it could be the wattage thing as well that's 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 holding that back but also it could be the process node right um the playstation 5 started on seven nanometer it's moved down to six nanometer the dia went from about 320 millimeter square to about 280 ish um I do think that we're probably on six nanometers for this because I do think you probably have more leeway for moving clocks higher um, if they are on a proper, you know, a properly better process node. There's, you know, all of the, the data that we've suggested here does kind of suggest we're still on six nanometer. And that's actually quite interesting um, because I do think that that would be viable for the specification that they're leaking here, that has been leaked here rather. And also that um, the GPU clock also seems to be quite um, conservative, shall we say, that also points towards a wattage limit and um, uh, a process node being more of a conservative improvement than we saw with PlayStation 4 Pro. The upshot of this is, as Alex said, is that the games that are targeting 30 FPS are not right now are not going to be targeting 60 frames per second on PlayStation 5 Pro if they're CPU limited. So, you know, all of the sort of conjectures that, hey, this is going to be a great uh, box for Grand Theft Auto 6. Uh, we'll be able to run that at 60 frames per second unless there's some magical CPU stuff being done by Rockstar. I suggest that's not going to happen. Extra 10% on clocks isn't really going to do much at all. It will help your sort of 
worst possible frame rates when you're CPU limited, but it's not a game changer. I think that's that's pretty clear. Right. Uh, any, anything to add to that, Alex? Uh, no. I mean, uh, I, the only thing I would say is that like uh, we should always want developers to target the best possible experience on every machine. And right. um, just because there's been a handful of games right now that are uh, not doing a great 30 or dropping because of CPU limit issues doesn't mean all games are going to be that way. So there is potential, obviously, for games to be brought up to 60 FPS when they're 30 on PlayStation 5 base amateur uh <laughs> but it just it means that the cpu cannot be the hindering factor for the reason why that game is at 30 fps absolutely yeah mm -hmm. and in actual fact you know when you look at the gpu and the machine upscaling stuff that we're machine learning based upscales upscaling stuff that we'll talk about later one might also say that we've got a very ps4 pro xbox one x style scenario in that the gpu is far more powerful than the CPU. It's not a particularly balanced system. I mean, the more I look at this, it, the more it does remind me in terms of overall design objectives as the 4 Pro. You know, it's basically the same machine, but with a much better GPU. And um, there's some other nice things that we'll talk mm -hmm. about. Um, but yeah, CPU, I think we'll get that one out of the way because, um, first of all, because I do think it is probably the thing that's probably going to disappoint people most um, especially as you know, as the generation has progressed, we didn't quite expect to see ourselves being CPU limited in as many titles as we have been, but we are, and the Five Pro is only going to make a marginal difference to that. So, yeah. <laughs> One last thing I have to say, and I was just thinking about it right now, is that there's a technical upgrade that um, Later Zen has that didn't make it back for this and probably was unrealistic for it to be but i, I look at my 7800 x3d and that's all one ccx it is not right. splitting the cores up into uh with the infinity fabric in between the the four four essentially two units of four which uh slows down things uh, in general it's been kind of like the biggest issue with rising performance for gaming over time so that's why people when they buy gaming uh, Ryzen PCs, they do actually look, uh, it's why people recommend actually the eight core variants or the six core variants that don't have the cross, you know, CCX thing going on there with the infinity fabric. So, uh, that was one thing that could technically have been brought in and maybe die space is an entirely different question, but also bringing up the, the cash amounts to what desktop Zen is. Um, I can't. I actually don't know how much that affects wattage of the system, but um, bringing that up could have been another semi-invisible way to improve performance. But once again, that's die space, and on a console, that's a lot of money.